All right, guys, welcome to a very special edition of the Kissing Honey Podcast. <laughs> you get filled with that having you guys here on the podcast. Is right? that all your guests smile when you start the show? Check it. <laughs> Thank you, viewers. Do they call the people who watch this stuff viewers? <laughs> See, you guys. Mm-hmm. The guests here are quite modern, you guys. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> they, they, they don't vibe like those VPN as a man. See, you guys. Check like, viewers at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Eric is my guest for the day. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've been looking at this couch and I was wondering uh, with bated breath when you'd invite me. Uh, you guys, it's been a long... I think I've been inviting you ever since this was because of spice, you guys. Really? <laughs> No, I think you are. Taki podcast I, I think, I, Check I, you guys, Itaki <laughs> podcast. Check it. Uh, I was tired of vibing myself. I was mourning. <laughs> yeah, but that morning, day you had me, though. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do that to you guy? Yeah, you can't I, remember? I you can't remember I do. very well. <laughs> you guy, you've done very bad things to me, you guy, with that voice of yours. Check it out, you guy. Hey. I'm hmm? I think you wanted us to do something, but I was in a mourning period. Yeah. <laughs> We were experiencing uh, an exodus. You see, during exodus, you cannot be doing uh, yeah. conquering Jericho. Yeah, you true. have to, yeah. you have to exodus. And that was a while ago. It was how many years? Two years, right? Since we left Spice. Yeah. Yeah. Two and uh, two years and some change. Yeah. yeah it's been many, many years. Eish, but time flies. You time guy. flies. Eish. Time flies. I met a lady who was telling me the way someone told her that you and I were fired. Oh, someone said that. Yeah. That uh, at. <laughs> they had intel uh-huh. that we were being mischievous and we were given to delinquent See, yes, you guys. So, uh, <laughs> so we were kicked you guys, out they of the guys used to work by the book. Can you imagine? They so used to I, get there by three, five, you guys. So I sure laughed you. heavily. Check it. I also, <laughs> I also met some chicos telling me, Sisi to, uh, she was told Sisi to look at Kichwa Ngomu. Oh, really? Yeah, man. Mm. Especially where were you guys? Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay, she didn't say especially, yeah. but at least my sister will go to Angumbo to Kayenda. So uh, maybe one day we should do a show about uh, why uh, why we, we left, left spice. Yeah, but you think some people will have tumbo jotos? Yeah. Check you one on Galilea <laughs> Nini. I think I think there's some guys who might have tumbo jotos. Check you one on condition yangu na wanaongea hiyo mambo publicly, honestly. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should, you guys, because it was uh, quite dramatic. But you guys, the last time I I uh, actually listened to you, oh, apart from the things you do online, mm. the last time I was listening to you on radio. Uh-huh. So you are doing a show. I was on leave. Mm. So you are doing this show, and it was quite interesting. Huh? Uh-huh. I think you are talking about how to read a book. All right. uh, you are saying the way when you're reading a book, just if if it's a problem, reading the whole book. Maybe just read two pages and then right. three pages. Do you remember that? No. I don't. You don't remember saying those things? Remember, I used to say a lot of things. You know, uh-huh. we used to speak for three hours daily, uh-huh. Monday to Friday. So you you do a lot of uh, talking. No, it was interesting because now me, I was at home. Yeah, you, I think you called me after the show and you said, you know, no, you called me during a, a music interlude or commercial. Mm. And you said, you know, I was driving uh, back home yeah. and I was listening to you. And what's fascinating <coughs> is that I'm actually learning a lot yeah, from listening to you. It was quite which I thought was very funny. <laughs> so, like, this guy must tell me he's learning while well. <laughs> listening. Okay. Yeah. You don't think you can learn from me? No, no, no. No, I think you can, but you're saying it like you're surprised. No. Check you out, Nafikiria Mimi Nim to Dim. No, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I, you called me about it. Mm. And uh, I think you and. Uh, our former colleague were away for that last week. Yeah, yeah, uh, And yeah, then yeah. I hosted the show by myself for maybe a week or yeah, a week and a half. Yeah. I can't remember. Yeah. But it was the 12th of uh, March 2021. 2021? Mm-hmm. 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2021. Yeah, and then, uh, uh, and then I think the following week I resigned. And yeah. then you also resigned. So yeah, you were true. not fired. Yeah. But if you're watching this and you used to follow adults in the room, none of us was fired. Uh, we made a very personal decision mm, to leave. You to leave, mm. uh, and I would like to think that it was based off of uh, uh, serious mindfulness. Mm. So we were mindful about you, mm. but also mindful about our mental health. Sana sana, you sana sana, and <clears throat> we thought that uh, you know, money and uh, fame. Versus, versus uh, the peace of mind, yeah. and then we chose 
you know peace of mind yeah, yeah, and so that is what happened yeah. as to the details i think one day we'll do a show yeah, as to why we left we'll but nobody show. was fired yeah, nobody true. was fired in fact i remember one of those bosses writing me an email and saying i am surprised you have resigned nah. uh, <laughs> it's a very strange chap Take, i'm surprised that you're surprised that i'm surprised in you because you see you are a fool of surprises Tarana. You are a surprise <laughs> fool, man. <laughs> At yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, that is guy, funny. That guy, guy is a funny guy. <laughs> uh, uh, but you guys, how, how did it? How was it? You're telling me you were because even me and yeah, it was it was a good decision, but mm. it was a hard one, you guy. Yeah? Uh, At least for me, I don't know about you because you had your own uh, personal plans. Mm. But uh, especially the first say. Uh, uh, three to four months. Hey, it was quite rough. I didn't know what to do next. Eh? <laughs> so I started cutting the fence up in Kitengela. You uh, know, uh, eh? well, mowing the grass. Uh, I, was, uh, I think I was lost for, for a time. Then. Thank God you found yourself. Well, for me, <clears throat> I, I think... Um, so we worked in that station for a total of 19 months. But from the onset, from the first time we were doing simulations before mm. we went, when went on the air mm. i sensed that it's not a space i would be in a long time oh, okay and then uh, that was confounded by one of the dodgiest person who was a boss there wow. uh, i think one time he did something very dodgy maybe wow. three months into it the initial stages the initial stages wow. so after he did something super dodgy what i decided to do i remember telling myself i have to uh, sort out my exit of mm. this place mm -hmm. And so, uh, because I'm a Christian man, I started doing it prayerfully. Mm. I think even one time you and I put up a fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, remember yeah, when yeah, you I broke was... it with a banana? <laughs> <laughs> I was letting me... With a man to record in the same to fast, banana. <laughs> you guys, I, was fe I was almost fainting, you guys. <laughs> I broke the fast. You I didn't make it to the, the very end. You guys. So, so, I think for a year... It was very tough for me in the last year. I was not very happy. I didn't like that space. Yeah. I honestly didn't like it. Yeah. I, mean, I can say that now. Yeah. And so I was telling God, you see, this is a gift from you. Uh -huh. And uh, you say <clears throat> that all good and perfect gifts come from above. And the blessing of God maketh rich and added no sorrow with it. But uh -huh. this is sorrowful. Yeah, but I remember I used to be angry 24-7. Yeah, I was upset. You're like God the way he feels about the weekend. Yeah, I was upset. <laughs> in fact, one of my friends who work out in the gym used to tell me, after I left Spice, he told me, you know, I was afraid of telling you, but he used to be very angry. Uh -huh. And what I used to be afraid of talking to why, you. Why were you mad, though? What, what used to I, 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 it was, like that? It was, you, you see... It was a cocktail of things. Uh, you see, it's hard to have conversations... As, as somebody who do accounting. Mm. You see, accounting, you do, not to downplay anybody who does accounts, but you see, it's a numbers game. The balance sheet has to balance. Mm. There's expenditure, whatever goes on in accounting. So it's something you can sit in a cubicle and do. But um, conversationaling is a hard issue. Yeah. Like I can't talk to you, for instance, when I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, true. Yeah. You see, it's a hard issue. And uh, if your heart is hard, then it's harder to keep talking. Mm. So I was in a toxic space where I was perpetually happy. <laughs> so I'd go look at that building and go like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Then I'd say, who's 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 uh, and then go in. But it's funny people don't tell because the show is killing it. Everybody used to tell me that, yeah. hey, the perfect trio. Yeah, yeah, okay. like, <laughs> <laughs> the show was prepared. Yeah, okay. It's funny that many times we would only start speaking when we were going on live. Yeah, which was sad. <laughs> Check you tuned in to ninety two point four. A very good evening to but you. But you guys, that sprocking in close. I think it's like a marriage. That thing. Yeah? Mm, terrible. So going forward, uh, as we've discussed privately, uh, like the people you decide to do things with, it's very important. It's to, very important to sit down and think about it. It's very very important. I mean, um, <coughs> there's a scripture I love. It says, uh, "How can two people work together?" unless or except they agree mm. so if you don't agree it's hard to work together yeah. you know and uh, many times in life uh, discomforts happen when you are taking a turn mm. you know mm -hmm. if you're taking a turn <coughs> during turns that's when a lot of things fall apart yeah. in marriages in friendships mm. in employments so it's easier 
not perfect but it's easier when you are aligned and you're in agreement mm. but if somebody in the name of a boss or a colleague is very contrary then it becomes very difficult to walk the path of yeah, yeah. attainment but when i was there one of the things i realized when we used to stand out there to wait for transport to go home eh? mm. i used to meet quite a number of people who would be very agitated by that place eh? mm. so they'd say oh, please me not talk me by next month me ni menda but they're still there you guys <laughs> so me think uh, that move of leaving a place where you think is toxic is also very rare you guys yeah, most, most people are just for various reasons yeah. Yeah, but and you can't blame them uh uh, but I would say, so I was saying earlier, for a whole year I prayed about leaving. Mm. I was just like, God, God, God. And in my spirit, I felt like I was not yet supposed to leave. Okay. And then I stayed and stayed and stayed. And I was losing weight and I was becoming smaller and I was becoming angry. And I, was get, and I used to go home and go, <laughs> what, the, what is this? No. Ah. Until one time, that last weekend I was hosting the show alone, I felt a conviction that it was my time to leave. Oh, okay. And just like that, like clockwork, the next week I handed in my resignation and I left. Mm -hmm. And I was telling God, if I don't ever work on radio or television again, I'm super happy. Mm. I would rather entertain people topless on Mombasa Road. <laughs> As uh, you know, those guys who dance on the street, stick the guys on the traffic lights. And then I jump on my heart and start doing that. I'd rather do that than be in that uh, space. No, but I think you learn. You might end up in whether it's not on radio or. But but you uh, funny enough. But you're doing something. I, you know, sometimes we downplay some of these big things people are doing mm. because they are not in a corporate setting. Mm. Now you chomoka and now start Eric stories. You should check out Eric stories. I always tell you know people normally ask me, "Who oh, Eric?" All oh, right. And then they tell me, "Si utafute Eric umlet." So do you Eric? So you have something you said called Eric stories. So, but so during the COVID period, it was mostly a listening year. So when we left radio. It was smack in the middle of coronavirus. You remember? 2021 there. Yeah. Because COVID <coughs> went all the way until end of 2021. And mm -hmm. then maybe we started getting some reprieve in 2022. So uh, some group of people, I was talking about my birthday or oh, a year older in June of that year. Actually, when I left <coughs> at the station, I went on holiday. I went to Lamu. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was you chilling there for like so 10 days. You went for 10 days? Yeah. It was 10 days yeah. when you were in Lamu? Yeah. I almost drowned in the ocean. Seriously? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> I was swimming and then I almost drowned. Uh, I was the swimming, tide swimming part that you were going Yeah, tide police. And you know I'm not the greatest yeah, swimmer. Yeah. And I was alone. I was at the edge of the ocean. Yeah. But anyway, I made it out. And then one time around June, I was showing my followers albums of uh, my childhood and just celebrating my birthday mm. and I, I did a, a little chat i was just talking about life and some of the things i've learned and uh, a bunch of people maybe a dozen said why don't we do something mm. like don't just leave us like that mm -hmm. you see now you've abandoned the sheep at spice and there's nothing happening here yeah, why don't we just do something so i thought about it and um I think the following week, I started uh, random conversations. Mm. So I used to film them nightly and I talk about topical stuff, marriage, relationships, sex, just random stories around um, the human family and our deficits mm. and uh, lifestyle. <coughs> and then it morphed into a live, which I do now every Friday. Mm. So every Friday at <coughs> nine, all the way to sometimes midnight. We just, just you know, we just trade stories. Mm. And one time we were doing the live, and uh, a couple of ladies said, "How, how about we meet in person? Because mm. now, you know, the restrictions are being lifted. COVID is ending. So we did our first meet up. Uh, I think in 2022, mm. and a whole bunch of women came. How, how come it attracts ladies like that? I have no know? idea. In huh? fact, uh, we were talking about this between you and I, and you're saying that from your stats, there are a lot of yeah. Men, you get me. Mine is men 90, love you, ninety-four percent right? men. You men me. want you. <laughs> <laughs> you get, they want me. You get. <laughs> I, so, uh, uh, ladies, a bunch of ladies came. There are men who come, but mostly, I think uh, I vibe well with chicks. Uh -huh. So we did the first meetup. Then six months down the road due to popular demand we did a second meetup mm. and now just uh, this past week 
was it past week or a week before mm. maybe a week and a half ago i did um, the third edition of the no, meetup so it's grown into its own thing yeah, yeah. and uh, we're having a lot the of age fun. group is uh, mostly women between the ages of 25 all the way to 52 so mature even 60. very mature yeah, women, yeah very mature women see was chano mchezo uh jamaa napenda majali zaka when chali hapo <laughs> They're serious. Chicks. No, but men are invited, Because huh? I remember yeah. Brian also. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. There's a gentleman. There was a bunch of guys. I think I had four or five guys. Yeah. But uh, it's a caliber of men. Yeah. Because those chicks know what time it is. They're very smart. Yeah. They have their money right. Yeah. They are, they know what they want. You guys, do you think it's a nice spot if you want to socialize with uh, one mama and to marriage? As then if you want to meet uh, someone or... I I don't think so really. It's it's sort of well how they've been describing it is like a very nice safe space mm-hmm. for exchanging ideas. I, I I don't think it has a romantic no as aspect. You know it. the way you have to go to you know the way when someone is looking for a partner, mm-hmm. so they have to go to certain spaces. Nowadays it's very hard to find yeah, a space. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that would happen. When they go But a, if you come to a club, that if you come for the purposes of that, I think you can get disappointed. Oh, okay. Because yeah? that's not so the mind. That's not the mindset. Mm. The set mind for the meetup is really polishing one another. Mm. We the creed of the show is you know better is good. We share different perspectives. We talk about books. We talk about. Um, life mm. we talk about very you know variety of subject matters uh-huh. yeah so if you can gel in that space uh authentically mm. then maybe something can be bad yeah. yeah so you guys the last time we we were worked together ulikuwa na journey moja very unique to mm. many people ya celibacy uliacha na ukaanza ku kunini no imagine <laughs> you guys, you are allowed to say that when you are space. Kubinja, you guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> That's funny. No, amazingly, by the grace of God, I'm still holding. Oh, for real, you guys? Yeah. How long has this thing been now? It's, uh, I've lost count, but a number of years now. Uh-huh. Because we were, I think when we were getting on radio, I was maybe uh, three years in. Mm. And uh, since radio, it's going to be three years. So uh-huh. maybe about five, six years. Ish, but mm-hmm. you guys are good you guys. Mm-hmm. Huh? Hey, you guys are kids yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Mungu mate. So many of the guys who watch this thing are young men. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm sure that's quite wondrous to many people. Many people find it weird, even chicks, you know. Yeah. You remember when we yeah, yeah. that place yeah. there was a chick who we were vibing and she was really wondering how you can date without uh, Yeah, even women having sex. There are many women. I met a chick a couple of weeks ago, a new friend of mine, and she was saying so over the years how how have you been relieving yourself? Uh-huh. And I found that question very fascinating. So it's it's possible to express but uh, how how have you been? <laughs> Okay, you're not answering the question. No. So we go to the relief, Adi. No. I think uh, sex is overrated. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm speaking not from <coughs> a pious or, or Simon Pure standpoint. I feel like um, it's it's just like a, it's a, it's a, it's an appetite. Mm. Just like food, you know? Mm-hmm. You can have a uh, a monstrous appetite for chapatis mm. so that when you see chapatis you're like you mm. start vibrating yeah mm. but if you tame the appetite then you surmount it then you are able to relate with people in different segments of relations that are away oh, okay. or devoid from sex it's like uh, say dropping sugar yeah so there are mad benefits to there are there many many sugar. because uh, <clears throat> most people don't have meaning for relationships because sex comes and microwaves the relationship so you you start it off i mean nothing wrong with sex sex is amazing sex is god's creation but i feel like uh, if not controlled then you can miss on a possible wonderful um union with somebody mm. simply because you started you know, at, uh, from a wrong footing do you think the the 90s i feel like the 90s really made uh, relationships sexual like, mm-hmm. uh, you remember kena jodesi kina boys to men you will make love to you mm-hmm. like you want me to you guy yeah. and i'll hold you tight Yes. So like I remember when I was growing up I was really curious about this sex thing yeah. because I was seeing it all the time yeah. I'd see it on the music videos mm. I'd see uh, on uh, you remember the raga muffin videos mm. so those chicks would yeah. 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 Chill up, yeah. chill up, chill up. Del, del, the best thing. I used to really go to the clubs and gyrate yeah. I used to love that part of the rhythm <laughs> 
Zizi, now you see that's what those are the things we grew up listening yes, to you yes. guys. So I feel like it was a it's it's a sort of mental conditioning. Mm, yeah. That uh, when you meet a chick, the first thing you should do is uh, bang the heck out of her, you guys, or yeah. vice versa. Yeah. I mean, um, mm. some of my best relationships with women I've dated were the relationships where we put sex to the side for a minute, even when I was having sex. Uh, there's a woman I dated who uh, she was in UON. I don't know if that program is still there. They used to call it ICL. I chose life. Okay. And one of the key components of ICL was chastity. Mm. They were not permitting that you have coitus mm. uh, except and until you get married. Mm. So when I met this young woman, she said to me, you know, by the way, I like you. You're an incredible guy. But just so you know, I'm not... Or she told like you up front, eh? mm. <clears throat> and and so we stayed like that for two years. I was younger then. Mm. I think we dated nineteen twenty. Uh, so two years we were just you know we we're going for the movies and hanging out, but we created such a good bond. Mm. So foolishly, as I was growing up, I used to think that she was just a good person and we just kicked it. But I realized where the mismatch was in my tentative relationships because I began them with sex, mm. and. Uh, when you are facing life now after the sex, you can't seem to sort out issues yeah. because you only know to relate from a sexual yeah. aspect. Yeah. But I think if you build a good foundation of friendship, camaraderie, mutual understanding, honesty, respect, then sex becomes an icing on the cake yeah. more than this uh, the eating the icing as a kick. Yeah. Either if I was to go back in time and never sing and the cook come on, mm-hmm. <coughs> it would have just uh, chilled you. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. even there's a sad thing which says that uh, marriage is the altar at which sex dies, you guys. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's because you've been shafting every yeah, before. Your you waist is tired. Yeah. You've ejaculated <laughs> as tomb. Take two! Then you are told by the pastor to love and to hold, and you've got nothing in the tank. But check it, to love and to hold who? Uh, it, it feels weird because of the conditioning. So now when you tell someone like, ah, see, where you know, you get a story, gun, you mm. So what, what, what can someone do, you guys, if you want to? Like, how do you begin such a journey? Mm. So honestly, I, I love to challenge myself. My advantage is um, I'm, I'm blessed in that I'm a very disciplined person. Mm-hmm. So all I need to do many times is to decide. Decide, you know. I can decide on any course, however mm. austere or tough. I could decide on that course and take. And then, so how I go to this space? Of course, because of my faith, a lot of my faith led to me be exercising chastity. Mm. Um, not to say that people who are believers exercise chastity. I know a whole bunch of my friends who who are Christians or even Muslims, but, you know, they Wana enjoy a good rub. Mm. But I think um, in my personal journey, and I've shared on Eric's stories, you can go and look through, you'll find this conversation. So I'm not redundant. But my personal journey was this. I felt like sex was so easy for me. It was easy, mm. you know. I mean, you and I have been friends for a long time. Uh, but sex has always been easy for me to mm. get. It's it's one of those things I could just say, hey, how are you doing? And women like me, and I like women, and we get laid. Mm. You know, lyrics. You know, yeah. I just see my lyrics as in, it was just easy. I don't think, I remember one of my older re- relatives used to ask me, what do you tell women? Mm. You know, because I remember there's a chick I was vibing, who to me a poem, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was as I enjoy your poem, I equal original did, content. Did you tell her it was your poem? Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you you guys, guys. really had quite a courtesy of that poem. That is sad, you guys. <laughs> Check it in the way you told me that the light in my eyes and the softness of my skin. Oh! 
guy was ah, that is so funny. Is funny. Uh, so, uh -huh. so, so I was saying that uh, I think for me, I wanted to challenge myself about the things that were not ordinary, at least for me. I thought that, ah, this is easy, I can do this. Mm. I want something I don't know anyone who's doing. Mm. So I can prove it to myself that I can. Because there's no one in your circle. Nobody, your nobody was doing. In fact, when I told a bunch of my friends that I was beginning it, they were like, "Ah, we are giving you a month." Uh, yeah, true. Now they get upset with me. They tell me, "How long are you doing this thing for? Oh, yeah. This thing is crazy, man. You you want us to come to your funeral right. without?" <laughs> so so how can somebody go about it? I wouldn't say apart from my ability to have some sort of discipline. I think I prayed a lot mm. and God has graced me with the ability to just mm. stay the course. Yeah. I would credit all of any victory, if at all any, to God. Mm. God, so has God, God, God if it was me, I mean, there are many mornings I wake up with a gigantic uh, uh, member. Uh -huh. Check <laughs> <laughs> And you see, my eyes work perfectly fine. I don't wear glasses so I can see. I can see God's creation. I meet so many beautiful women. Tons of women hit my DM and say, Hi, Eric, how are you? I was just wishing you a nice day. Mm. Then you click on the picture, you're like, uh -huh. I'm going to have a nice day, you know, but um, by the grace of God, I've been able to be grounded. But the other thing I would say, if I had ABCs or one, two, threes of doing it, first of all, proclaim your intention. Just say, like mm. when I began this journey, I said it publicly, mm -hmm. even in spaces like radio. Yeah. I think when I started this, I was working on television and I said, ah, oh, I'm pursuing just well, you said it those days. Yeah, I said it. Kitambo. So now everybody who sees you comes knowing that, oh, is this for real? Mm. Now the, the flip side is some people come to your life thinking, ah, I'm the chick he's not met who is mm. going to break this uh, You're going to be converted. I'm going to, yeah, uh. but I'm going to give him a serious thorough riding. Uh. So there are people who come like that. But I, I think by the grace of God, I've been able to surmount it and stay the course. So one, proclaim it. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. And then uh, second thing which uh, helps, try and avoid situations that would make you Mm. fall back because i mean we are the sum total of the people we hung out or hang around with so if you have friends who are bastardizing your decisions the decisions you feel are important to you <coughs> then you know it behooves you to cut them off mm. because they are going to make your journey uh, more tedious yeah. so cut them off or put them to the side or reduce the amount of time you hang out together and then um, the other thing is a pretty common sense thing to do instead of inviting people you are attracted to of the opposite sex to your space you can still meet them but in a restaurant or in the company of a yeah, friend yeah. so if you get the most voluptuous chicks with sharp hips in your house with the shortest cut you know your body your body will betray yeah, you true, yeah. your trouser will start bulging yeah, yeah, excessively your member will start uh, mm -hmm. and, and 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 now Check you, you fall. Yeah, exactly <laughs> so make up um, and a hug uh, then but rather than because even in the secular world nowadays there's a lot of talk about that stuff eh? mm. about uh, yeah, did they say cg semen retention yes mm. yes mm. Uh, but, but what are the benefits you, you got a lot of time in your hand uh well uh, the, my mind is clear i used to have very useless relationships which were just sex driven mm. my mind is clearer my relationships are fun you know, they don't have any hidden agendas, mm. even with the opposite sex. If you see me with your girlfriend in town or you're talking, trust me, I'm not mm. trying to get funny. Mm -hmm. I am at <coughs> immense peace because nobody's sending me nudes. Yeah. So so I feel like my life has become more... And then there's also the relaxed. fear of uh, contracting something. Yeah, yeah the money yeah. when I was uh, sexually Check active. <coughs> yes. When I was sexually active one day, I had sex and I think uh, uh, that chick... I saw a rash, I think, on her neck or something uh -huh. when she was leaving the next day. Uh -huh. And then I started imagining that I'm losing weight. Yeah, I was like, was, yeah. is my hand becoming smaller? <laughs> and uh, I, more than that also, your resources, you can plan better with money. Yeah, because it's Cause expensive. We, men and women, uh, dates are expensive. And yeah. women have cravings. Mm. She can take sense, okay, I crave ice cream. Yeah. And now you have to go to the ATM. Yeah. So uh, I think sometimes people are out of pocket, especially men, because they've not tamed their sexual appetite. Mm. So if you're sleeping with Jane, <coughs> Julie, Sophia, and Brenda, and you think you're a player, if mm. you do the math, you are being played yeah. and not by them by yourself because you see an average meat there's a fruit fly here which is really yeah, flying around yeah. 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 sorry so you guys 
Mm. Uh, the average meetup would cost you maybe three Gs or two Gs. Depending Even if you do a, bad, a, a serious budgeting. Yeah, yeah. Depending so if you multiply that by three. It's yeah. expensive. It's yeah? expensive. I mean, uh, but, uh, but let's be honest also. Uh, sex is fun. Sex is enjoyable. But I think within the confines of how it should be had. Mm. I think a lot of people get hurt in spaces where they've given themselves off. Uh, typically how most women are wired. I mean, they're woke women these days. But women love security. Mm -hmm. They want the security of partnership, relationship. That's why mostly women who ask, what are we doing? Who are we? Because they're asking for security. They mm -hmm. need a covering. Mm -hmm. Men enjoy and love sex. Mm -hmm. You know, so a man can have sex until the cows come back home. So many times we get hurt because we are trading off the things uh, like sex in the hope for the things we want. A woman who trade off sex for hopefully the guy will get serious oh, and ask me to marry okay. him. So it's uh, a different. Uh, the two parties normally are having different. Yeah. It's a different transaction. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's sort of a transaction. <clears throat> so I think and now you see what women are doing and men too. People are more liberal. People are more sexually expressive, and uh, if you've not attained that level of sophistication, so that you know you are having sex for whatever other reasons except for the ones you have as an interest to get married someday mm. or to marry a chick someday, then it, it would be wise. That you put everything in the open and say, you know what, I understand uh, Joachim that you want to get late, mm. but as Quinta, I prefer some sort of security. Mm. So yes, I'm going to give you some steamy coitus, mm -hmm. but I would be very happy if you also committed and put a ring on my finger, uh -huh. so that uh, we are covered nicely. So in your in your uh, exploration of uh, this subject, huh? mm. what do you think? Uh, guys, after they get married, now they stop having sex. Uh, even with my with my uh, experience, mm -hmm. you guys, yeah. after six months, but So, uh, what but you? before you got married, we'll go on a cool So it's 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 some it's some sort of opposite thing. Because I'm not married and I don't know for sure, but I would say. In the single years, if you can spend a lot of time in the courtship stages talking about, I think somebody wrote about it, I forget his name, he, he speaks about the five agreements, I hope I remember. I speak about agreements around sex, words, love, and what are the other two? Mm, sex, love, words, uh, I'll remember the other two. But during courtship, before you get to the I do part, if you can talk about sex, even your sexual rhythm. Many times people don't are not aligned about their sexual rhythm. What are we going to be doing? But you see a lot of us are busy zooming in and out of people's yeah, behinds on yeah. Instagram. Check it. Like me, you guys used to be hey. a behind. Like you, guy. you are a Facebook guy, Kabisa. Yeah, you used to really like zooming and looking so yeah, intensely on those check it. And sending messages. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I think if you can use that time to just say, okay, we're going to have amazing sex, yes. But uh, what is your story? Mm. Uh, what, what, how, how do we fight even? Like, uh, how do you like being spoken to? What is your love language? What is What works for you away from just this sex thing? Mm. So I think that way you can have more qualitative relationship. I know for once, I've told you this, I don't like contentious women. You know those people that like, yeah, mm. mm. So that would tick me off. But you see, when you meet somebody who is hippie with pouty lips and dimples, if mm. that's what fascinates you, then you jump to bed with them. Uh, rarely will you get to get to the place of having a conversation about their contention. Because you'll be signing the contract in advance, yes, so to speak. Yes, yes, yes. So I think if you can have the conversations around some of these tough things because marriage is tough if you're being honest yeah. marriage is tough there are so many turns and twists and seasons change and the people's bodies change and their libido dips mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they have challenges getting children or uh, there's uh, a miscarriage and there's uh, in-laws and there's outlaws <coughs> and there's money challenges and so on and so forth so if you don't do a good job think about it if you had to use the analogy of a building even this building they spend a whole lot of time on the foundation, yeah, so true. it's perfect. Yeah. So the foundation in a relationship setup would be serious conversations about how to speak with one another, how to love one another, how to have sex, what rhythms are okay for you, mm. what rhythms aren't okay for you, 
are you keen on hanging on a chandelier and jumping on me? Mm -hmm. Oh, you are so modest, you cannot hang. Yeah. And then if you can't hang and you must hang, can I go buy you a rope? Because yeah, I need you to hang. Yeah, and then now we can discuss... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to use a whip. And now we can discuss why I want you to hang. Mm. You know? <clears throat> why is this hanging so important to you? You know? And, and, and so on and so forth. So I feel like... Um, we do a poor job during courtship period, especially as men. Men are reticent, they're not communicative. Most men and women don't know what they want. Mm. And then sometimes people go into spaces where they start saying, ah, this marriage is not working. But if you go down to the basics as to why you got married, you would quickly realize why it's not working. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. so, so, but many, many uh, people, especially in my circles, mm. Uh, they they rarely have these convos, you guys. Mm. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys just say they so a chick and are gonna rasa yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. And then the next week, and the same story. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's never a deeper convo. Or uh, another thing I've noted, because nowadays I hang out with some older guys, eh? when now you get into now the marriage and then it didn't go well, now is when now they start doing some of this analysis. No. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in any discipline in life, success and failure are predictable and intentional. In anything, it's true with money, it's true with your weight, it's true with your obesity, it's true with your living conditions. You can predict success. Success doesn't just happen. So then the question becomes, if I'm going to be happy in a relationship, be it a marital relationship, a calm, we stay relationship, what are the principles that govern longevity in marriage? Mm. And do I have the want to or the ability to employ the principles? Mm -hmm. It's the same way if you're going to drive to the coast, you would need some sort of things. Maybe you service your car and you have enough money for fuel. Like you can't live here on Mombasa Road and then you go to coast with 250 shillings worth of fuel. Mm. It is not going to happen. Yeah, and now you can't get stuck in a river and then you start preaching and crying in the car. Yeah, Father man. Jesus. Yeah. You won't move. Check it Lord in the name of yeah. Jesus. So, so I think there is a principle that governs money. Mm. There is a principle that governs weight loss. There is a principle that governs joy. There is a principle that governs happiness. There is a principle that governs camaraderie, honesty, respect, and so on and so forth. So instead of lamenting about our marriages and not working, maybe the better conversations we can have is, what are the principles that govern the challenges that I'm facing so that I learn the principles together with my significant other, hopefully. And uh, then what do we do? Then we make this marriage work. Mm. You know, I'm sorry, I reference the Bible a lot. People don't like the Bible much I'm nowadays. Sorry, guys are like, yeah, it was written by men. No, nowadays being an atheist has become a thing. Also. It's work. Eh? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not yet work, and I don't think I will be. But the, I've read the Bible a lot because um, I turned a big age recently. And I was thinking about the trajectory of my life and how society says, you know, people like you, your age. My friend Ogembo, you know him, he's a dad thrice. And we were classmates and we've been friends for over 20 years. So the other day we were driving to Nakuru and he was telling me, Eric Bana, when are you getting a someone? Mm -hmm. You know, you need to get married. It was intervening. It was in, you know, he said, you know, I'm a, I, uh, should I introduce you to some people? And we were laughing. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I came back to Nairobi, I was really interrogating biblically, what is the mind of God about marriage? So when I was reading the Bible, I was asking, God, what is the idea? Because clearly there's something amiss. The church as the world has the same number mm -hmm. of divorce rates. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have oh, to okay, use okay. the American stats, 50% right. people are divorcing in the church, 50% in the world. Mm. So the church still hasn't gotten it right. Yeah. But in my reading the Bible, while God doesn't preferably tell us who to marry, he gives us guidelines. Mm -hmm. And there are three guidelines that stick in my mind. If I don't mind, I can share for somebody who wants to get married. So first guideline is the thing I was talking about. Uh, no, let's start with the most important one. Asking God if you're a Christian. Because God has a mind for who you want to marry. It's not about you. That's mm -hmm. another thing I'm learning about marriage. It's not about you. And of course God wants us to have fun. But really the bigger picture is not you getting a hippie chick to be ejaculating inside every night. Yeah, or a man to be riding and yeah. cooking for. Mm -hmm. I don't know what chicks look for in marriage. Or the security again. The bigger picture from what I've read in the Bible is God wants, it's generational and it, there are things he's planned. I think in Malachi it says that what is it that the Lord God wants? He wants us to have offsprings 
who are taught after him mm. so that you when you get your kids you tell them about god so the first thing is to ask god who if at all this is for me who is it you want me to marry and i get this from i think genesis 24 12 mm-hmm. a dude called eliezer he used to be a worker for abraham he says a prayer and says god i've been sent by your master abraham he doesn't even know god he actually says god of my father my master abraham yeah. <clears throat> my master has sent me to get a wife for his uh, son isaac mm. and uh, please give me success now this is my humble request the lady i talked to amongst these ladies it was a river they were fetching water if i ask her for water let her not only give me water but let her offer water for the camels i've come with mm. and we see quickly he eliezer asked rebecca for water and uh, rebecca gives him water and quickly says can i also fend for your camel and if you know anything about camels they drink lots of water mm. they say up to 10 jerry cans per camel this dude had 10 camels mm. do the math and this chick sorted she them sorted out. all the camels out and mm. all the while the bible records that eliezer kept watching then he said I've, lord thank you you've answered me yeah. so number one ask god you can't marry everyone and anyone not everyone and every anyone is meant for you mm. there's just a person or oh, god can present a people for you mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. or a person of people to choose from so i think for me one ask god number one number two jesus speaking in luke he says how can you uh build a house without counting the cost i don't know if you're familiar with that scripture yeah. so he's saying before you build the house of marriage count the cost of fidelity are you honest enough as a man to provide and to zip up mm. and to love on your wife and to provide for your wife and to die to self for your wife to take the construction business of marriage mm. and as you are you present enough as a woman to submit women have problems with this submitting thing yeah, yeah. again yeah, walk generation yeah. uh, we can put it another way that is palatable for a woman if you are and also men do a very poor job yeah. of demanding that women yeah. submit then they but then they are them. not even submitting themselves okay. so submission for me submission is to digress cooperation and agreement mm-hmm. so i'm willing to cooperate and agree with this man i am married oh, okay, okay. cooperation and, and agreement, agreement. Okay. so uh, then the other question under that scripture of Luke, uh, do I have the cost? Have I counted the cost as a woman to be faithful, to be present, to love him, to respect him, even when he's disrespectable? Mm. He's been out of work. He's been broke for a while. Can I still respect him in that space? Mm. Can I still really respect him? Or is my respect conditional? Like when he's coming back with, you know, mm. a car full of paper bags yeah. filled with stuff. Mm. Then I'm like, hey, my husband. Mm-hmm. What if the car gets repossessed and the house gets repossessed and the kids are not going to the ideal school that I want? Can I still respect this man? Now, in the counting the cost, if the answers are perpetually no, then you don't do it. Mm. Finally, the third thing I would say, which is a guideline that I think God has put in the word about who to marry, is... Uh, Amos 3 3, which I was talking about earlier. How can two people walk together except and until they agree? Meaning you must agree sexually. So that somebody doesn't want to prick your bottom and you're like, hey, my bum, no. Mm. You have to agree. <laughs> the, the, you have to also agree uh, <laughs> psychologically. Uh-huh. You have to agree in terms of values. What are your value systems? You have to agree about things like kids. If you don't want kids and I want kids, it's hard. Mm. We are not working together. Mm. We have to agree about money. Are you going to pay the hard bills? Will I pay the soft bills? Mm. You know, you have to agree about in-laws. You have to agree about outlaws. Will your mother be coming and dictating how I make your soup and mm. chicken? Yeah. Because, you know, she raised you and she knows how you particularly like your chicken. Or will we be staying with one of your relatives? Exactly. So if you're not counting your cost if you're not in agreement and if you've not asked god many times it becomes difficult and then finally do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever it's right there in the open somewhere in corinthians the idea is this marriages work when two good people come together and make one to use an analogy i was watching a nigerian lady uh, preach she said when you take a very bad rotten egg and a very good egg and you beat them together the bad egg contaminates a good mm. egg and then it becomes a very smelly omelet even same as tomatoes right? yes mm. so you cannot take at, at, ah, i'll just it's manage okay. yeah. it will not work mm. 
it will not work so you have to make sure one you individually are a good egg then by the grace of god you get another good egg then when you break it you get a very sumptuous omelet mm. so those are some of the guidelines i think can help somebody uh, navigate some of these things but if you don't know that then you just keep oh the booty oh the feet what if oh. now you're in already you guy so you know naskia is bit <laughs> no con daddy, daddy, daddy. God is a good God. He's your Christian many times. And even if you're not, God is a good God and he's in a restorative business. I mean, uh, I think you and I have had conversations offline a couple of days ago and I was telling you from Moses who left the palace at 40 and uh, went to complete obscurity in the bushes t- catering for the sheep of his father-in-law. Moses was a house boy for his yeah, dad in law. That's great. After now? leaving the palace yeah, and not for a year or two or three, for 40 years. Ish. And yet God had the ability to restore him into, you know, notoriety. Mm-hmm. He became the leader of two million people, you know? Mm-hmm. We could call him the his president. His father-in-law was alive all the way till when he became uh, Yes. Sison who came and advised yes, him to Yes, about uh, uh, dividing and delegating yeah, duties, man. Jethro. But I can you imagine what was going through his mind? I know we're talking about it offline, but mm-hmm. I'm sure it, at some point when you're chunga in those sheep, you're like, hey, how did I get here? Because exactly. I've been thinking the same thing. I think I shared with you, uh, I'm turning 42 this year. Mm. And, uh, you know, lately I've really been thinking about, like, what have I done, mm. you guy, with mm. my f- whole 42 years on there? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night wondering, you guys, ni me fa... And then size. there's an image of an hourglass in yeah, my mind. Eh? Yeah. And then now the bottom part has more of yeah. the... Because, you know, you turn the hourglass when you reach uh, 12 o'clock. Yeah. So it's a 24 hour. Yes. So you turn it. Yes. So I'm like, yeah. so I'm like, 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 God is in the restorative business. I think if you've uh, sunk so deep that you feel like, ah, you should have known this earlier, God still can restore. We know of Moses... We know, we can even call them uh, resurrection or restorations. We know of Joseph. You know, think about Jacob when his children told him, your son has been mauled by lions, he's dead. Mm. The dude, oh, the yeah. Bible says he used to look at the horizon. For 17 years, these evil, evil kids lied about their brother. Yeah, and just... the guy was literally dead. Yeah. But see what is recorded in, in him going to Egypt He laid his hands on Pharaoh. He laid his hands on Ephraim and Joseph's other child. He was reinvigorated, you know? And we see the story again of people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Like there are tons of stories, scripturally, if you're a Christian, about God restoring. You know, God restores. He restores Elizabeth. He restores Hannah, who did not have a baby. And Penina used to laugh and laugh and laugh at her. But Hannah later gets a whooping... Uh, prophet mm. in Samuel mm. and five other children if I remember correctly so God can restore but I think you have to be willing and open to want to do the work hopefully together mm. but also another thing I think you mentioned it without mentioning it you you have to think of yourself yeah. mainly mm. you know the way you always think the problem mm. but many times you have to start within checking out your own character yeah. and seeing what flaws you have which are Mm. messing up your relationship. And yeah, and we are deeply flawed. You know, sometimes we excuse our own BS and we have a, a very diminished understanding of our own capabilities. Eh? And so many times warped. So we look at people and we're like, I, I should have married a different man or I should have married a different woman. But if you turn and look at the person in the mirror, you see your quirks yeah, and how hard it is for the other person yeah, to also live with you. Yeah, yeah. So I think if you can humble yourself enough to say, you know what, I don't know enough and uh, I am not perfect. And yes, my partner may not be perfect. Okay. But me, I am not perfect. So what are the things I'm bringing into this relationship that are unseemly that are making it harder for this other person? Mm. And you just, you know, if you are very kind and gentle yourself, you see, okay, I'm a perpetual late karma. I'm lazy. I don't I am a liar I don't provide this chick cannot rely on me mm. I am out of pocket I'm wasteful I'm wasteful in a year I have many promises than anything delivered mm. and then you can start saying you know what to be honest I've not been a good husband to you either yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've been very dodgy and I sold you a wonderful dream and it's really subliminal yeah. I've not delivered it was a mirage yeah so now going forward I plan to work harder 
nivumilie tu nipatie mwaka kama moja si nane <laughs> i and think then, you need mwa miaka tatu <laughs> yeah so i think if we can be honest like that then people can extend us grace but if you are always looking at the problems with the other person this person is a problem mm. this person is lazy this person is that then you miss a chance to be introspective mm-hmm. i think real changes begin when you look inward and then outward changes happen mm-hmm. and uh, the other thing that must be said is that you cannot change the other person mm-hmm. you can't change that other person you can only change you mm-hmm. if you understand that it's easier but if you start changing that person change they won't change mm-hmm. people don't change really unless they've been met with a lot of pain yeah. or beaten to a pulp mm-hmm. Like you guy you had a lot of change and now there's umeshona yako yote mm. but kuna time ulikuwa ume dish pia yako yote <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and uh, yeah of course people can change but it has the inclination and the desire to change mostly emanates from themselves mm. not from the other person mm. like my change all of my changes <clears throat> even now how i bulk in the gym was because of and I was like ah, i've been skinny too long let me bulk a bit mm-hmm. and uh, when i was fat 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 i was like this is also not so good let me lose some weight a bit i remember also. before my uh, zack died i was very nonchalant when other people die around me mm-hmm. and other people whether they die or p- people around them die <laughs> just is like ah pole man uh-huh. then i go back to it calamari airport uh, <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of that joint you got which one uko in gongrota bro bistro check it let's call amari now let's a nini deep yeah ya ku deep check it now na chui colch chui colch remember those beers they used to brew there does that place still exist yeah it's still there it's interesting it's, yeah it's still there you guys yeah, so and uh, yeah. so people had been uh, all saints meeting cuz uh, someone has oh, you wouldn't even go for those no man that's yeah, sad. i was quite tough when they think uh, of them, <laughs> my past you guys have uh, like yeah. so when my dad passed on uh, i was even you and your mother died was i there you guys i was uh, there you guys. i think yeah. i was just somewhere roaming around you guys levanting on basa road you guys yeah yeah so yeah. after now i went through it i was like ai kumbe hiyo chungu ni ya ukweli yeah yeah so i decided after that i decided i'll be more proactive in uh, uh you know going to when when people around me are facing various challenges mm. I'll also try to be there even if it's just being present yeah so but it's sad that you have to go through the pain to to mm. change i feel mm. like if you can just have that ability to change once you encounter the information i think you can do better you can in life you guys and then after your father died your mom also passed on yeah, and i know Jesus. you and your mom are very close ah you guys yeah, do you still very... wake up at night uh, weeping uncontrollably uh, are you coping now it's been a month now hasn't yeah, it's it it's been a month uh, but the human being also has this uh, healing ability which is mm. okay yes i miss her mm. but uh, now i think of more of i, I think her death made me think more of my own mortality. All oh, right. I think that's why I'm thinking about that 42 year old mm. thing mm. and uh, you know what I'll be doing now. In fact, I was thinking about her. My mom used to be a secretary. Mm. She first she worked for special branch. Mm. She used to type detention letters for guys. Mm. Uh, and then uh, when she left there, she went to, to some church organization called mm. it was called Uzima Press. Mm-hmm. So she also be she was also a secretary there. Mm. So she, uh, she uh, told me she used to earn 12 Gs. Mm-hmm. But with that 12 Gs she used to do much. Mm. And uh, one of the things I learned I was thinking about it after she passed on was how to not spread yourself too thin because mm. I felt like I was looking about back at my life and I realized uh, my mind was on too many things. Yeah. I want to do this, I want to do podcast, I want to do yeah. what, I want to yeah. keep bees, yeah. I want to farm yeah. sugarcane. Yeah. So I'm like the reminder of my life from my mom's uh, passing. Uh, passing was I look for the few things I really really want to do mm. and I with the limited resources I do those things and I do them well. Yeah. Cuz I don't know if you come to my shack. My mom really made a very nice. No, I've seen the homestead. pictures. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the pictures. It looks yeah. quite nice. Yeah. yeah. And she never ever bought had a car. Mm. Uh, you know she ne- okay obviously my she used to use my dad's car mm. and you know she she was resourceful mm. so uh, i think those are now the things that i'm thinking of right now mm. uh, how to become resourceful with the the things that you have and to make the most impact with the with the little you know yeah. how to spread your resources towards a specific thing mm. yeah now i mean death is painful i've also experienced death as you know uh, 
it's it's uh, the thing about it is this: the death is quite democratic. It's not an aristocracy, so that it happens to a few people and neglect uh, neglect other people. It's a democracy. If you've not lost somebody, live on. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, uh, it, it will eventually happen hopefully not you dying yeah. but it's really painful and that icy feeling stays with you I remember when I lost my mom one of my dad's friends my friend's dad's rather my friend's dad said uh, he lost his mother 35 years earlier and he says it feels like mm. just the other day. it mm. feels like it's fresh so that icy feeling stays with you and uh, I think it's nicer to extend grace because uh, uh, parents hold a very serious spot in many people's lives, you know. And uh, if you can, where possible, you know, you go where people are mourning. Mm. I think, again, it's a scriptural principle. Blessed is the one who goes to the house in the morning than that who goes to the house of the feasting. Mm. Because it's very lonely to mourn, you know. I remember when your mom passed, I was fortunate to be at the hospital as she was passing yeah. on. And uh, it's it's very lonely. It's a very it's a very icy feeling, and you need people. You know, in this generation now, people are very big on these Dubai trips and Lambo, and and uh, I bought a new whip mm. and hashtag YOLO. Yeah, you, you know all yeah. of these things. Well, nice things are nice, granted, but um, uh, relationships supersede real estate. You see, you have a podcast and equipment and stuff going on here. You can't talk to yourself. Yeah, true. You need people. Mm. And you never see a house being followed by money. Mm. Like when we were at the Requiem Mass, with the, when we were laying your mom to rest. I didn't see an ATM card yeah. or her savings following her. Yeah. I saw her children. Mm. And so that tells us something. You have to be present when you can with your children, with your wife and present in a meaningful way. Not only when they die, present in a meaningful way. Care about the things that they care about. Concern yourself with the things that your children are concerned about. Concern yourself with the things that your wife is concerned about. In a meaningful way, be present. Mm. That way, you are putting deposits that you will withdraw even in your absentia. You know? Uh, I normally think about things around, again, your mom was sick just as my mom was, Money cannot wipe your mucus, you know? Mm. Or if you've, you know, peed yourself. Money will not come and... I read a very interesting report about uh, old people in Germany and how they die. Because mm. most people are taken to hospices in those homes. Mm. And they say the nurses and the caregivers are very, very mean. Mm. They are very, very mean. They mm. treat them very badly and then they burn them. And that's it. They burn them. They burn them when they die. They just burn and like throw them. They don't have family. Either. See, the family is busy. See, you guys are yoloing. Uh, you know, it, interesting. There's, uh, there's, some, there's some two ladies who are taking care of my mom. Mm. So uh, there was one, I think her name was Christine. Mm. So she was saying, uh, obviously because of my mom's way of bringing us up, mm. she had many, all of us actually, all of us were there mm. during the period when she was sick. There was always someone in the house, remember? Mm. Mm. Uh, there was always someone visiting her, you know, making sure she's sorted out. Mm. So even when she became really, really sick, there was always someone there, mm. you know, trying to see if she's okay. Mm. You know, my sisters came mm. to stay with her. And then since the, that lady, the caregiver, we used to call her a caregiver, mm. the caregiver was telling us many homes where she goes to give care to this, this palliative care, mm. the family, does, they don't show up. Yeah, yeah. So they just leave that person with them yeah. until this Absolutely. person dies. You guys. Absolutely. And huh? it's simply because of what I'm trying to say now, uh, those parents who are now sick and being abandoned with caregivers did not put good seeds in the ground. Mm. You see, we can't leave this show and go to, say, Stanchat and say we need a million mm. and neither of us has an account there. Yeah. See, they'll call cops. Yeah, true. Check, I need you to withdraw a million now. They'll say we are robbers yeah. because that's what robbers do. So either if you have an account, only times you are withdrawing is when you've deposited. Mm. The only other time is when you've gotten a loan, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Yeah. There's something has to be put in there, yeah. and alone you have to pay with interest, yeah, right? Yeah. So this idea of absenting yourself and being so busy chasing whatever it is that you're chasing, 
I think people need to rethink it. Mm. You know, you need to be really present in a meaningful way. And there's coming a time where you'll be, you know, old and tired. And you really need to now start going through your accounts mm. and looking at the deposit you made in your children, in your wife, in your siblings, in your friends. Mm. And as you are saying earlier, when you gallivant and your friends' parents have died, if they are mean, when you are parent has died, they won't come. Yeah, they won't show. They just like, hey, we'll yeah, 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 true. You man. know, and uh, same applies to your family. I know women who are so accustomed to living without their husbands. Yet they're married, mm -hmm. but the husband is always, you know, he's just like, Sin mekula, sin oh, what, what, should I, what should I come to do mm -hmm. with, you, with you guys? Mm -hmm. And so when that trajectory, when that um, sequence continues, the guy can hit a snug and then he's alone with a caregiver mm, mm. There, there's once i recorded a tiktok mm. so that time my mom was alive so i said hey me i'm from taking my mom to hospital mm. and uh some th there was actually a couple in hospital mm. so this couple would shanga that the my mom's toy is there so mm. like, you, your children are very good children i was never showed up here yeah, <laughs> so it was yeah. sad yeah. So I recorded it and I told that story and people, some people in the comments were saying, ah, no, let's not depend. Let's, uh, they were saying something to the tune of, uh, you should be, save some money, or as in have money to take care of yourself. But as you know, money is not the only thing you need. You need, you need people. I mean, money is good. Care. Yeah, money is, huh? you need, uh, I, I, I don't ascribe to that school of thought about money only money is nice yeah. but we get money so that we can make other people's lives easier and better i think peter was making a stellar argument he says god blesses you so that you are generous in every occasion not for you mm. it's for you to be generous in every occasion where you can but especially about the core relationships you know if you look at again the bible i hope you are not yeah, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus' module of relating with people is very interesting. Mm. So Jesus seems to have about five stages of how he relates with people. At the very top is John. He used to call himself the one Jesus loved. Mm. That was the guy who told us intimately what was happening in Gethsemane. Dude was begging and telling God, I know I'd agreed to be crucified, but can you change your mind? Yeah. John saw that. Mm. Okay. So if we are to put a pyramid... At the top of the pyramid of Jesus is John. Second is uh, James and Peter. Uh -huh. Okay? And the, so the, the two. Uh -huh. Those are the guys he used to go with to Fufua, Jairus' daughter. Uh -huh. And he chased everybody else. Uh -huh. So John one, James and Peter two. The three had the nine. Do you remember the guys who were left at the, yeah, uh, at the foot of the Mount of Transfiguration? Uh -huh. He told the nine sit here. We'll be back. Mm. He went with the three and told them, don't say anything until I'm crucified about King Elijah and Moses. Mm. So the third cluster had three. Mm. Or they had the nine. So, so the fourth cluster in the pyramid had uh, 70. Luke says he had 70 disciples, 72, who he laid his hands on and sent away. Oh, okay, okay. okay. And then the final cluster were the 5,000 he fed. Mm. So if we are to mirror Jesus' example of relating, you have to have your intimate circle. And so in a typical father, mother, husband relationship, that becomes your wife or husband. Mm. Okay? And maybe your siblings and your mom, you know, that intimate circle. Then when you calm down, you have your two, maybe your best pal. When you come further down, you have your nine. Maybe your former classmates and people you can call and say, hey, you guys need a quick 9K. Mm. And then you have your 70 and then your 5,000. Many times your 5,000 who are your followers are people who take from you. Mm. Those are not your pals. Mm. The one gives to you. These are the person you can pour out to. Mm -hmm. This is the person you can lend your ear to and have them hear you begging your father so you're not taken out to the cross. Yeah. This is not a conversation for everyone. It's a telestial conversation and then they're seeing your vulnerability they can so, see your vulnerability and they, and they won't go tell the 50 uh, the 5000 mm. you see the difference mm. so foolishly if you think of money 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 you really are dancing around 5000 because uh -huh. the 5000 want bread and money yeah, that's what true. they want yeah. so that money only thinking is for the 5000 mm. that's a total view thinking yeah. but you have to be transcendent in your thinking so you uh, advance your relationships to the 
So you acknowledge their presence, but you don't focus there. You don't focus you, there. You, Those you ones are for you feeding. Mm. They need you. They draw from you. Okay? Mm. They draw oh, yes, from yes, you. Yes, yes. You're feeding. You're feeding. Them. Oh, yeah. So these are not your pals for hanging out and chilling and going to their houses. No, no, no. You feed them. Because their view is for their view is for feed me. Touch me. Sometimes I see guys mm-hmm. unleashing very personal info to the five thousand. Exactly, like, especially with the social media age. Yeah, if you know to cluster people like that, now you not post a picture of your pregnancy yeah, on, uh, before you give birth. Yeah, yeah, or maybe you've miscarried and now you post. Mm. This is painful. I mean, maybe that's an outlet. Mm. I, I'm not judging how you use this stuff, but I feel like you need wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing. Know who belongs at the top tier and who belongs at the bottom of the pyramid. Mm. Don't mix them up. Yeah, true. Do not mix them up. The other way we could look at it is three clusters. People can be either your confidence, your comrades, or your constituents. Confidence, pretty self-explanatory. It's the John. Uh, Comrades are the people who are against the things you are against. And then, uh, and, and then uh, confidence, comrades, and um, constituents. Constituents are the people who are for what you are for. Mm-hmm. So you don't oh, mix yeah, the two. Okay. Constituents are for what you are for. Uh, uh, comrades are against what you are against. And then the confidant is very special. Mm-hmm. Stays up there. Mm-hmm. So don't confuse your comrades and your constituents with a confidant. Because mm-hmm. they are not... Mm-hmm. 